Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today I'm going to hit another viewer request, topic request. And this one comes from Doreen and it says, narcissists will definitely break you if you, if they can. That's the one thing that my ex couldn't do to me. I think for me, the hardest part is not understanding why they can't feel and be aware of how they are hurting you. I was in therapy for two years after I walked away, but my therapist told me you can't make them see and understand how they hurt you because they are incapable of doing that. Why are they incapable of feeling remorse? My therapist also said they don't feel that they did anything wrong. How in the world is that possible? It's very hard for me to accept that. And I'm sure there are many others who feel the, the same. Is there some insight you could offer in a video that would clarify this? Uh, I love your videos and all that kind of stuff. Okay. <clears throat> that's a really great question. And this is something that I struggled with as well in the beginning of this. And part of the thing is, part of the thing is, is that we can't wrap our he head around the reality that we're dealing with somebody who never really loved us. And, and the hard part about that is we're, we're looking at it in the way of how we perceive love, how we connect with somebody and our emotions and our feelings. And, and we're basing our evaluation of the situation with that, with that lens. And the problem is, and like your therapist was saying that they can't feel, they're incapable of feeling remorse. The, the, and it's, that's exactly it. Their thought process and their way they approach things is completely different. Fundamentally at their core, it's a different, you know, internal programming. Now, typically that's caused by childhood trauma and unresolved issues. And it's kind of one of those things where typically people go one of two ways. It's like they either kind of go down the, the empathic side where you try to like, okay, how do I make, you know, how do I please everybody? How do I keep everything in, in tune on that? And then the other option is a lot of times people will veer off to the other way where they just shut down and they don't care about anything else and they shut all their emotions off. And, and then that just builds up, right? It's like as they get older and older and older, it just gets worse and worse and worse. That's my opinion. But what happens with that is their version of love isn't what a normal person's version of love is. Like you have that connection. You actually have that feeling. You kind of like, okay, I'm giving a piece of my, my soul to you because I love you and I care about you. And that's the basis of the relationship. For a narcissistic personality type, they don't do that. They will look what you're looking for. They will see, you know, how you're responding and they'll mimic that. They'll play the role. They'll put on, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll put on their act to demonstrate to you what they think you're looking for. And they're good at reading people, right? Because they're good at, at uh, seeing what somebody wants and they're able to mirror that back to you so that you think that they feel the same way you do, which then it makes that bond that much stronger. The reality of it is, is that they don't really care about you because they can't, they can't allow themselves to open up and to be vulnerable, really vulnerable to you to let that, that happen. The, the, the issue with that is, so then they do things that are very hurtful, um, very one-sided, very self-centered, and you're left going, what, what the hell? You know, I, I don't, I mean how could this person do this? I love them. They loved me. They said they loved me. They, you know, they, they demonstrated it. The, the problem is, is that they only demonstrated it in a way that, you know, that you could see, right? It was an act. So it wasn't genuine. And I think for the most part, when you look back at the relationship, you'll be able to see one that at some point during the relationship, they told you exactly who they were. There was a moment of vulnerability where they said, you know, I'm a bad person. I don't, you know, I, I can't love people or no one loves me or, or whatever it is. They normally, expose themselves. The problem is, is that in the context of what of the relationship, we just think someone's being hard on themselves and we don't believe it because we love them. And they're like, no, obviously you love me. And we're basing it again on our value and our um, perception of what love is. Okay. So the problem with this is that it's, it's, it's really hard to wrap your head on. And I've made other videos on this. If you go through the mindset of narcissistic abuse recovery playlist, I have a bunch of videos that build on this. They're older videos. So my presentation is a little bit different, but I think they're still valid. You might want to check that out. I'll leave a, a card for that playlist up, up at the top and it'll be at the end of this video. Um, the, the thing is you don't believe it. it. It doesn't make sense. You're like, no, this can't be true. You know, of course they have to love me. Of course there's got to be another reason. Of course 
They're just being angry because something else. Nobody can be, nobody can be this disconnected. Well, no, yeah, they can. And it's their defenses, their defense mechanism. And that's why they can switch it off in an instant. And that's why it's so painful for us, because even if we're in that, in that stage where we think something might be wrong, but we're still holding on to the illusion or the hope of the illusion of what the relationship is, when they realize that we're no longer you know, a suitable source of supply, it ends. It's done. I mean, it's, it's like, they're like, oh crap, okay, this person is done. I've got everything I can get from them. They're not, you know, they, the gig's up. And, and the worst part is, is if, if they think that the mask is finally slipping and maybe you're seeing too much behind the curtain, they're done. They're like, nope, if I can't control this person anymore, I'm out. Boop, they'll hit the mat, they'll tap the mat and they'll be done. The, the, again, the problem with this is that we get so wrapped up in it that it doesn't make any sense to us. We're, you know, and you get caught in that do loop, you know what I mean? And I, and I know exactly what Doreen is talking about on this because I've had the same conversation with my own therapist back in the day when I was struggling with this. I mean, cause it didn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. I often tell a story and you may have seen the video on this, but on, uh, bef- I had a, a one therapist that I did for a while, but I was paying completely out of pocket and it just got too expensive. So I stopped seeing her, but there was one thing that, and she was pretty good too, but there was one thing that she said early on and she said, well, your ex loved you in the only way that she knew how. And that actually really threw me for a loop because I wasn't, I, I still wasn't thinking straight and I'm like, oh my God, she actually did love me. And, um, you know, and this whole thing fell apart, but there was love there. Well, effectively what they were saying. And, and, and Doreen, your Thor, your therapist, <laughs> your therapist may have said the same thing. They don't know really how to love, right? I mean, they don't have a basis on it, so they don't know what it is. And, and bottom line is, is it's toxic and it's destructive. You know, I mean, you may have, let's, let's take a, an example of a drug addict, right? Or an alcoholic, you know, somebody who has an out of control problem. They may fundamentally in the deep recesses of their mind actually love you, but they're incapable of doing what they need to do to take care of themselves and to take care of you. And at some point you're either going to follow the ship down and, you know, follow it down into the abyss, or you have to take a step back. And that's kind of the same thing with, with toxic personality types is it's not a healthy relationship. There isn't genuine love. There isn't genuine respect. There isn't genuine compassion because they don't even have compassion for themselves. It, it's really tough because we want it so badly. We want the illusion so badly. And part of the reason this is an issue is because in the beginning of it, they are mirroring everything back that we always wanted in a relationship, probably because we told them exactly what we always wanted in a relationship. I always wanted a girlfriend or a wife that was like this, this, or this, or a husband that did this, this, and this. And in the beginning, they're like, oh, okay, that's what they're looking for. So I'm going to give them that. I'm going to be attentive to it. Um, that's why in some situations, this wasn't my, this wasn't in my situation, but it's why the, the sex is so good is because they are so focused on giving you what you want in the beginning to, to suck you back in. And when they do that, when that initial connection is so strong, it is like a drug and you want it back so badly. You want that glimmer in their eye when they look at you and you think that, that they are the right person, that they're your soulmate or they're, they're, they're completely connected and you guys are in tune. You want it back so bad. So when it shuts off, it doesn't make sense. And what typically happens when it shuts off you go into hyper vigilant mode, trying to get it back. You're trying to please that person to get back to the way that used to be the way it used to feel. The problem is it wasn't real. It was an illusion. Okay. So let me wrap this up into the important part about this. And it's a pivot that all of us go through in these relationships. And that's where we, we shift from focusing on them to focusing on our healing. And that's, that's really the key, right? We get to the point where we're like, okay, why was I so attached to that person? Why, you know, why am I in this position that I'm in? When you start working on that and you start realizing, okay, there was, wow, hey, how about that? There was childhood trauma that I didn't realize I had. You know, I've been attracting the same thing over and over again. And, and that's typically what happens is, is you have this, this old wound that you're trying to heal. So you end up picking people that are the same. I know that seems a little weird because you start out with, you know, the, 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 uh, fake 
persona that the person is trying to portray towards you. But what I mean is, is once it starts to shift, it goes, it, it shifts into our childhood um, uh, experiences. So fundamentally, it feels kind of warm and cozy because, hey, uh, that's the way my parents treated me. That's the way my mom treated me. That's the way my dad treated me. You know, that's the way my siblings were. I mean, hey, this is toxic. I don't like it, but I can deal with this because it's there. But, but there were some good times in, with this new relationship. So you're thinking, okay, well, there's some bad times, which I grew up with. But every once in a while, I get a glimmer of hope of this illusion. We don't think it's an illusion at the time. And that's what uh, we fixate on. Anyways, back on what I'm saying is, is that when you start focusing on yourself, start healing yourself, start building your own boundaries, building your self-respect, building the love for yourself, it's life-changing. And it really makes a huge difference in your healing and, and how your life goes. And I, I know that, I know it's super tough, right? And we keep, we get so focused on trying to wrap our head around why, right? Why did the person do this? Why are they willing to smear me? Why are they willing to make up lies or make, take situations and embellish it or take it out of, out of a context to make them the victim and me this horrible person? It's because they have to live in that own, their own fantasy. And they can't allow to look at themselves. They can't allow the crack or the facade to open up because it's just too painful for them. I mean, the sad truth is they are trapped. Sure, everyone has the choice to, to step out of that and to heal from it. Unfortunately, people who are, are in this mode or in this toxic dark mode, it's like they've taken that dark path and typically nothing is going to get them to break out of it. You're not going to make them break out of it. Not going to happen. More than likely, if you have children, your children aren't going to do it. They are going to, they are going to stay in that mode. It's like they hold on to it so damn tight that they won't let it go. They won't let that, that false image go. So that's the reason why that they, they cannot feel empathy or they cannot feel remorse for what they've done because they can't, they can't address it. And in their mind, they're like, nope, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the reason you did it. You, you cause it, you know, you did this, this, and this, and that's why we're, where are we at? We're, where we're at and what happened and it's your fault and it's not my fault. And you know, you're the problem. I'm not the problem. Um, and they don't even think about it. They don't even look at their life. They're any, they're incapable of looking at their life, taking an objective look and saying, you know, WTF, what happened? Fortunately, we do. Fortunately, like Doreen, you're able to look at this and go, Hey, Oh my God, how did this, how did I get here? What happened? You're working on yourself with a therapist. You're trying to heal from it. If you're still seeing your therapist, um, and hopefully you can start pivoting and working on yourself and finding your own joy and building your boundaries and being able to, to take the time and the energy to take care of yourself, to, to give yourself what you need, uh, emotionally self-validate because all those lead to good boundaries and lead to better relationships. It's either one, you're fine with yourself and you don't need another relationship, or if you do get into another relationship, you have better boundaries so that if something's wrong, you won. We'll talk about it. You won't be fair. Uh, you won't be afraid, sorry, to talk about it because being alone won't scare you anymore. And it'll be like, okay, I want this relationship to move up. I want it to be a better relationship. And if the person's not willing to do that, it's not worth it. So uh, I hope that was helpful. Um, that's my thought on this. I know I've made videos about this on the past, so I'd love to hear your comments on this. Uh, if you guys find this channel helpful for you, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification so that YouTube will tell you whenever I post a video or go live. Um, if you, uh, at the end of the screen right over here is my narcissistic or my mindset for narcissistic abuse recovery playlist. And above that is a video that YouTube thinks is the best match for you. And so check that out and I will catch you on the next video. Take care. Bye.